The Trump-Harris debate on September the 10th will be an epic presidential debate. There's already been a lot leaked out by both campaigns to the press, and it's pretty clear to see what the strategies and tactics that both campaigns are gonna use. I'm gonna share that with you and give you a preview of both campaigns. You know, there's been one issue that's been a point of contention back and forth in the press for weeks. Now, I'll fill you in the details, and while it looks like it's been resolved, I don't think it's resolved. I think we're gonna see just the opposite in the debate. I'm also gonna tell you who's been role-playing Donald Trump during Kamala Harris's debate prep. And I'm gonna tell you who Trump has asked to help him during his debate prep. Yes, Trump actually asked someone for help. Are you ready? Let's do it. There's been a lot of political chess that has been played back and forth between the Trump and Harris campaigns. A lot of gamesmanship, each side trying to get uh, one up on the other campaign. You know, it started off with Trump saying, well, I may or may not do the debate. And then he decided to do the debate against Harris. Then he said, well, we'll go back and, and agree to all of the same agreements that we ironed out with the Biden team back in May uh, for this ABC debate. And then the Harris campaign came back and their biggest contention was they wanted hot mics. They did not want muted mics like Biden had insisted back in the first debate. And then they tried to just very openly and publicly get, try to get Trump to uh, uh, agree to it. They went out and said, well, Trump handlers prefer muted mics. Uh, they don't think he can act presidential in 90 minutes. Then they went on to say, well, it would be too embarrassing to admit that they don't think he can handle himself against Vice President Harris without the benefit of a muted mic. And the Harris team, you can obviously see, made it pretty clear that they believe that if there were hot mics, that Trump would likely go rogue and start interrupting, and that would play to their advantage. And of course, a lot of political strategists, uh, including Trump's team, said, well, no, no, uh, Harris just simply wants hot mics because she wants to create a viral moment, just like she did back in 2020 against Mike Pence. The president wanted people to remain calm. Well, let's get so I, No, but Susan, I, this is important. Susan, I, and I, I, I want to add, but if, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. Yep. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about packing the court then. Let's talk about the Please. fact. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to. $400,000 a year. He said he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. It'd be important if you said the truth. Yes. If you don't mind letting me finish. We can then have a conversation. But following that debate, there was an explosion of marketing items branding Harris, branding her as fearless, as being someone who can stand up for herself. So, they're going into this debate, there are supposed to be muted mics, but I don't think so. I think that somewhere in that debate, ABC News is going to unmute the mic somewhere during the debate, and I'll tell you why. CNN reported that ABC offered assurances to the Harris campaign that if there was significant crosstalk between Harris and Trump at any time during the debate, they may choose to turn the mics on. And that would be simply one candidate answering a question, another candidate off camera making some remarks, even though we can't hear them because their mics are muted, that ABC decides to flip them on, and now we have two live mics. So I'm not going to be surprised if sometime during the debate that ABC News finds a reason to flip on both mics and let them go at it. Now, I wanna give you the details of the debate, and then we'll, I'll tell you some of the strategies and tactics that both campaigns are gonna use going into this debate. ABC News is hosting this debate. The moderators are David Muir and Lindsey Davis. There was a coin toss before the, the, the uh, debate and uh, the podium placement was chosen by Kamala and Donald Trump gets to have the last closing statement. He gets to have the last word. The debate will be 90 minutes, just like the first debate. There'll be two TV breaks and no campaign staffers are allowed to consult with either candidate during those TV breaks. There's no studio audience, once again, and each time a candidate is asked a question, they're gonna be giving two minutes, two minute limit to answer those questions. And then the other candidate will have a two minute rebuttal to respond. 
And if the moderators, at their own discretion, decide to jump in with a one-minute follow-up, they have that choice to do that. But the big question is, are the moderators going to make themselves part of the news story? They didn't do it in the first debate. Are they going to simply allow the candidates to answer the questions, or are they going to uh, uh, poke and prod with follow-up questions? And if they do, will they do it fairly? Here's the debate strategies and tactics that the Harris campaign is planning on using. A woman by the name of Karen Dunn, a very prominent attorney who helped um, coach up Obama and Biden in previous debates, is working, has worked with uh, Vice President Harris here. And she's very big on really three things, knowing your topics, knowing your subject matter, but she's really focused in on mock debate prep. And she believes practice uh, is everything. And they actually have brought in a man to role play Donald Trump in these mock debate preps. His name is Felipe Reigns. And he helped uh, Hillary Clinton in 2016. Uh, he role played Donald Trump. He takes his job very, very seriously and, and really gets into character. So besides the mock debate prep, Harris is also being coached on having the right mindset and demeanor. And it's stressed by Karen Dunn of walking in with uh, and portraying confidence and conveying confidence, not only with what you say, but also with your, with your uh, body language. So the Harris campaign debate strategy, and this has been leaked to the press. So if you've follow the press carefully, it's pretty clear what's going to happen. Number one, she's going to needle Trump. Uh, they've been thinking of ways to try and needle Trump and get him rattled, that is if you can rattle Donald Trump, and ways to get under his skin, to get him to be reactionary, to get him to overreact, to get him to lose his cool. And will that work? Well, it didn't work in the first debate, but we'll see if Harris is able to do this. The other thing that she's going to do is what she believes is prosecuting uh, the case that she thinks she has against Trump. And she's going to call out what she believes are his lies, his failures, and his broken promises. And then the other thing that you're going to see is this repeated theme of moving forward, uh, where we can't go back to the Trump years, where she'll stress the, the, the chaos and the political divisions. And I'm sure she'll talk about the threat to democracy in January the 6th. Uh, it's almost as if Trump is the incumbent and not Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. They are the incumbent party. And David Axelrod said it probably best. She's trying to portray herself as a turn page candidate, someone who's hoping to turn the page on Donald Trump, and she's that, that answer. Well, the Trump debate strategy uh, in his prep during this time uh, has been very much different <laughs> compared to Kamala Harris. Uh, Trump says he doesn't need uh, the traditional debate prep. In fact, his campaign says Trump doesn't need traditional debate prep, but will continue to meet with respected advisors and effective communicators like Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard ran for president in 2020. And the reason why he, uh, and, 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 and Tulsi has come out as a former Democrat and endorsed Trump, and uh, she had a pretty heated exchange in a 2020 Democratic debate with Harris, where she believed she called out uh, Harris on her hypocrisy. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. Trump called her in to pick her brain and to uh, have her help him in this upcoming debate. So what's Trump's strategy going to be? Well, undoubtedly, his advisors are telling him he needs to keep his cool. He doesn't need to take the bait from Harris uh, repeatedly. Uh, his advisors have been telling him to focus on policy and not personality. And the other thing that you're going to see Trump do is make every effort to really define Harris on what he believes is a California liberal. Uh, he's going to try and highlight all of 
her flip-flops, of her changing her positions uh, on policy. And she hasn't explained why. This is the first time in presidential history that a presidential candidate has run against two opponents in the same election. And so, and it's also where a presidential candidate in Donald Trump is having to debate two different opponents. And those two different opponents are very different. Uh, Kamala Harris will not be like Joe Biden. So, my big question is, who do you think has more to lose in this debate? Who has the larger burden on them in this presidential debate? Is it Kamala Harris or is it Donald Trump? I'd really be interested in what you think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like what you watched today and you feel like you got some value from it, hit the like button for us. And if you want to be notified of our upcoming uh, videos and you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do that now.